Because Jack Shepard was so famous, a lot of the stories about him that have come down to us are exaggerated or just plain made up. But we can get a fairly clear idea of the main details of his life from the three biographies that were written while he was still alive. His poor family and education in the London workhouse, his apprenticeship to a carpenter, which he abandoned after six years, and his association with various underworld figures like Edgeworth Bess, the woman who became his mistress and whom he'd later blame for introducing him to a life of crime. And both the biographies and the news reports about Shepherd agree in giving detailed descriptions of the four prison breaks which made his name. Dr Peter Ross of the Guildhall Library describes how Shepherd began his career as an escape artist and the overnight celebrity it brought him. Early in 1723, he was arrested and he was uh, put into a lock-up. And it's, the lock-up's a small prison or jail. Um, lots of parishes had them all over London. He was put into St Giles Roundhouse, which is by St Giles in the Fields Church. Um, so he's put into an upper room to await being sent before the magistrate. Um, but that night, using uh, bits of his chair that he had, he managed to break through the ceiling of the room and then through the tiles on the roof, onto the roof, climbed down the back of the building into the, the, um, the churchyard and allegedly came and joined the crowd at the front who had noticed some tiles falling off and sort of pointed out that there he is, he's escaping that way and he was uh, just distracted them while he made his escape. He hadn't made it into the newspapers at that point. Um, he certainly was mentioned in the newspapers after his second escape, which was when he escaped from the new prison at Clerkenwell, uh, where he was sent um, and visited by Edgeworth Bess, who was then regarded as his wife, though they weren't actually married, and she was put into the cell with him on an upper floor in the new prison. And over a number of days, having obtained some tools, he started to to saw through a sort of oak bar that closed off his escape route out the window. And then, uh, using sheets and blankets and Edgeworth Bess's petticoats, he created a, a rope. Um, and they managed to climb down 25 feet into the yard outside the building, only to find themselves um, enclosed by a wall and a gate which they then had to climb over. So Jack um, created a sort of ladder up the edge of where the gate meets the wall Using the hinges and some tools he had, he managed to get on top of the wall, which is about 22 feet high, and then haul up the uh, famously large Edgeworth Best to the top of the wall, and they both came down the other side and escaped. So at that point, he started to become known, and I, I seem to remember at that point he appears for the first time in the newspapers, just a reference to somebody escaping from um, the new prison. His third escape was the first uh, from Newgate, so Newgate was the, the major um, prison in the city of London. So he was sent there um, and he was put into um, a cell on the ground floor, just under the arch when you go into, into Newgate, uh, where prisoners were held. He was, wasn't on his own, he was with other prisoners. And visitors could come up to the door of that cell and uh, above it uh, was an opening that was um, protected by spikes, by iron spikes, so stopping people escaping. But he obtained some more tools um, probably a file or a saw, and over some time he managed to saw through one of these spikes. So when Edgeworth Best came with another woman to visit him, and with the help of the prisoners that he was sharing the cell with, um, he was hoisted up through that hole. He managed to squeeze through because he was a very, very small, slight person. He was only uh, five foot five tall. Escaped out through the door, and Edgeworth Best had some women's clothing for him, so he disguised himself as a woman, and they just walked out of the prison because the, the jailers were, seemed to be occupied with having a drink at the, at the tap, which was just sort of around the corner from where he was being held. And after that, he became famous. Unfortunately, Jack was, um, he was good at escaping, but not very good at, at, at not being uh, arrested again. So he would always just basically return back to his, his local area. So he was quite quickly caught again, uh, taken to Newgate, and this time, the authorities thought they had to um, make sure that he was held in a secure cell. So they put him in what was called the castle, which was actually a cell on the fourth floor of uh, Newgate. And he was changed to the floor, basically. Um, but probably through his experience of being a, a carpenter, um, he understood how locks uh, worked. So he managed to unpick the locks in his cell, and a number of times he was caught walking around his cell when he should have actually been chained to the floor. 
Um, so they loaded him down with bigger locks, but he managed to find a nail in the floor uh, which he used to unpick the lock. So basically he had chains uh, on his legs um, and he tied those up. Um, he couldn't get them off his ankles. And then he proceeded to work out how he could get out of this cell. He knew there was one floor above him because he'd been in prison a number of times. And so he tried to go up the chimney. Uh, there was a fireplace in his room. He went up the chimney and found that there was a bar stopping him going any further up, an iron bar. So he started to demolish the chimney piece. He managed to pull the bricks out of the chimney, eventually got this iron bar out so he could go up the chimney into the room above, emerging through the fireplace in the room above, which was called the Red Room, which allegedly hadn't been opened for something like seven or eight years. So he was in a locked room above his cell. He managed to get through that door, and then over the period of a number of hours, he got through six other locked doors, um, either by just demolishing the doors, using the iron bar that he had, picking the locks, breaking the frames. Some of these doors had metal frames to them. He got into the chapel. All prisoners were taken to the chapel um, on Sundays, so he'd seen it before. He managed to burst through a number of internal doors in the chapel. He got through one door that had an, a seven-foot fillet of metal holding it shut and he managed to basically prise the whole thing off the wall so he could open the door. Eventually he got to a door which was just bolted on the inside. He opened that door and he got out onto the roof of Newgate, the lower roof, known as the lower leads because they were covered in lead. He climbed on the top of the door that he'd come through onto the upper lead, so he's now right on the top of Newgate prison, so he's 60 feet above the street level. And he looked over the edge and he realised that he couldn't get down to the houses around there because they were too far down. So he did what was probably the bravest thing he ever did. He went back his entire route to his cell. So he went through all those doors he escaped, down the chimney, back to his cell to get his blankets, and then back up to the roof where he fixed the blankets to the parapet with a spike that he'd got from uh, the chapel, and then lowered himself onto the house into a garret window and waited for basically the house to go quiet, because this was a late evening now. Eventually, it said that he heard somebody going out of the front door. So he basically just ran down the stairs and just ran out of the front door and was off and away. Very sadly, he was caught quite quickly because, again, he just returned to the Drury Lane area, eventually was found drunk, rearrested and taken back to Newgate. When he was captured again, he was the most famous person in London at that time. Um, he had escaped four dramatic escapes. The last one was the most amazing escape probably made by anybody um, from Newgate um, for before that or after that. Um, so he was very closely protected now. So he, nobody left him alone in his cell. He was visited by an enormous number of people who would pay to come and visit him. Uh, his portrait was drawn by the King's painter, uh, Thornhill. And uh, basically the government were now really worried that if he escaped again, he would be so popular, you know, he might, might lead to revolution possibly. Um, so they speeded up the process uh, and then he was hanged on the 16th of November, 1724. And he had to make the journey from Newgate to Tyburn. Um, he was the only person being hanged on that day. Uh, often you would be hanged in groups of people, but he was, this was like a special hanging. It took him hours and hours to make the journey because it said that 200,000 people turned up to see him. Most of the population of, of London turned up to see him. There are stories that he was going to escape again. So when he was searched, when he got into the cart, it's found that he had um, a blade hidden on him in the hem of his jacket, which he was going to use to cut the ropes that were binding his wrists. Also, there are stories that he had paid for people to cut him down quickly after he'd been hanged and that he would be revived, but sadly a bit of a riot took place at his hanging. So his body wasn't got by his friends, and the crowd carried his body off, and they had to get the army out to retrieve the body. And eventually then he was, he was buried the same night at St Martin's in the Fields. But he was one of the first media stars of, of, of all time, really. <laughs>